<laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Y'all, I took myself down a rabbit hole. I can't wait because I happen to love your rabbit holes. <laughs> I got plenty of them. I don't know where this reverb is coming from. You can't really hear it that much on my end. Okay, good. Seven o'clock. <laughs> time to turn into a pumpkin. It is time. Mr. Agenda just came home. Bye, honey. <laughs> we might have nobody join us. Today. That's okay. I feel, all right. Right. I feel like people are really busy. Not, I mean, I missed so many people in my sale yesterday. Um, just like a lot, like a lot of people that I'm used to seeing. Yeah, there was 40 something when I hopped in. But. Let me check my settings here. Oh, I could hear that. It's not loud on, on this end, that? but I could hear it. How about How this? About this? Is, that Is that better? Yes. I don't hear no. a reverb. Okay. okay. I reduced I'm mic like background noise. noise. So if you're in the chat... Oh, I heard that. What's going on? I don't know. It's it's not like on my end. It doesn't bother. It's not bothersome. But I bet for you, it's very annoying. It's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear myself talk. Yeah, I, Scott and I were dealing with the exact same thing trying to add the camera yesterday. Why? It was, it was doing that exact. Seen? It was doing that exact thing of. of I know, but I just I have, have one thing, thing open. open. Yeah. Hey, Tammy. Hey. My thoughts are with you guys. I just saw your post from the other, other day. Um, I didn't see a post, but I saw someone comment that mm -hmm. they lost someone in their family. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very, very... Don't know the details, but come on. And, and sad, and you have all of my thoughts, and love, and hugs. All the hugs. Yeah. Well, I know you weren't... In the path of the eclipse, are we? You aren't. We it's it's done already. It hasn't. It's eclipsed. It, now it went from like Texas up towards Maine. Like I don't think I don't think you guys could see any of it. Um. No, she said it was not in her path. Well, it here. We had ninety six percent, so it was it was close. We were I, I could have driven an hour or two and seen the full thing, but I had to work. Yeah, I didn't. I was I was much too busy to even think about it. Oh, yeah. You would you would have had to travel significantly to see it. It's okay. There's some really, really cool videos, videos of it that you can watch. Yeah. On I, YouTube. Maybe, maybe the like. find, finds one, he'll share it with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Does that help? I wonder if my mic is just way too loud. Now your now your sound is very low, or or you're just talking very softly. No, I turned my volume down. My mic volume. Mm -hmm. If that helps. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna hear myself. Okay. Just no long drawn out. Yes, we will pretend that you are there and there is a tiny Angela over in the corner repeating what you say. No, uh, Laura just texted me. She says it's major, major echoing. echoing. All right. All right. 
I'm going to sign, sign out and okay. come back. All right. I'll just stay here. Just hang, just out. hang out. All right. I'll just stay here. Hi, guys. Is anybody in the path in our in our little chat group of the Eclipse? I'm trying to think. I know Christy Tippywinks is. She's in Houston. Uh, I, I haven't talked to her or anything to know if she tried to look at the event. Okay. okay. Oh. 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 I, I, yeah. No. Okay. No. I don't get it. I have changed really? nothing. Um, well, she had me put my sound. I had it at halfway. Does that help? help if I put my sound higher? I don't know. Oh. How's, How's this? this? How is this? Testing sound. Testing. I think it's better. Okay. okay. Heather's better. <laughs> okay. Am I so ugly? So ugly. <laughs> you know, oh, Shana. Yeah. Shauna says echo. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 I'm going, I'm going to, to do a full shutdown. Okay. I will okay. be ready. Okay. But I'm going to put your slide on. Um, so you can talk do, about. Do you still want me? Oh, okay, so you still want me in the live here? Yeah, I don't yeah, think, I don't it's, think you. it's you. Okay, it's, it's definitely, definitely me. me. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, bye. Come back soon. Oh, <laughs> what she didn't realize is that when she left, she would go and take my slide away with her. <laughs> so there it went. <laughs> I will talk about it when it's back. Instead, can we talk about anxiety? Because I'm having a lot right now. Um, I know everybody's going through things. Um, and my anxiety is nothing compared to some of our friends out there. Um, I just watched Kathy Kitchy Cat. I watched her video on her live that I guess she streamed two days ago. Um, and and she is experiencing incredible anxiety and almost like like paralysis of not knowing what to do when you're like panicked and you're in a huge bind of needing to find a place to move to and not having the funds to do so, especially when you're caring for uh, your uh, aging parent who it, it, I don't know a lot about her mother's situation, but it sounds like she. She needs extra attention, um, I think is a very diplomatic way to say it. Um, but um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I I know a lot of people are going through things much worse than my little anxiety. And that was that was that was tough. I mean, I really have to, you know, give her credit for having the courage to share, you know, sometimes when you're in that position uh, that that takes a lot of courage to do. Okay. okay, let's test. Testing. 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 Testing sound. I tried a different browser, but I don't think oh, it, yeah. it, um, it gets, gets worse. worse. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought... I thought I heard I thought I heard you say something, but your mouth wasn't moving, and I got a little spooked out. <laughs> What's happening? I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. Um, but yes, Sheila was saying if um, we can link Kathy's stream so they can go out and watch it if they did not see it. It was it was it said two days ago, so. Two or three days mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Okay. Okay. 
I turned my volume way down on my end. So hopefully the reverb's not as intense. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not, but I don't know how it sounds in YouTube world. Right. Right. And to hear you, I'm just going to have to go like this. I I do have the gift of volume. (laughs) I just don't want to blow out all of our friends' eardrums. Well, Laura, Laura says you're, you're still, still super, super soft, soft, so oh, I'm still super maybe soft. you could turn your, your mic, mic back up. up. Okay. I mean, right now, it's I'll, I'll go almost all the way up. You should uh-huh. you should turn on our stream and tell us how we sound. Okay. I mean, they're you know our friends are telling us too, but we're, we're still, still echoing. echoing. But the echo doesn't sound bad, at least not to me. Like it's just going to bother you. <sighs> Is it bother is it bad for you guys? Shauna can hear me perfectly, she says. Angela says, I mean Sheila says, Angela, you're echoing. So echoing. I'm faint. What in the heck? I don't, I don't know. know. Um she says, she says it's, Tammy, Tammy says it sounds, sounds bad. bad. All right. All right. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What if it's. Try it. Hold on. Try it now. Now? Yeah. Did did that help anything? Hello? Yes. I think it was me. Because remember, remember, I I was having so many problems yesterday. Uh Uh-huh. My, I. We left my settings however they were. It's good. Right. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it's it's from my end. <sighs> okay. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> as long as we figured it out, that's figured all that matters. We figured it out. Thank you, Diane. Um, okay. Here. Now I can you. turn you back up so I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, we are good to go. All right. Well, it could have been my, because, you know, there were um, rumors that during the eclipse, your doppelganger would show up and try to just take your place. So I thought maybe I just had a secret. Did you, I don't know what happened that one moment where I was just like, who's talking? (laughs) It's not me and it's not you. What was that? (laughs) I want to show you something. Okay. Malcolm is here on my lap, but okay. look, he is wearing his diaper. Good job, Malcolm. Good job. He's he's not a fan. Um, but it's much better than the other diapers. And he can jump up onto things. He even got on the very top of his kitty tower in it. So we know that. It doesn't inhibit his movement at all, and it saves my sanity. So, the the blessing Thanks. of a of a diaper with a good fit. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to Laura. Laura found these on Amazon and sent them to me because I was literally about to make, you know, the decision. Okay, a parent wants to make. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I have to buy a pair of these for you know, every single day. That's, I can do that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Because he's still, you know, mostly with it, other than being unable to hear. Yeah. <laughs> he's still sassy. Yeah. Yes, those are his sassy pants. Yeah, it's just those incontrollable sure, urges that, that were. Yeah, but now when he goes to do it, he starts, like, he goes to the favorite places that he likes to go, and if he has the diaper on, he, he like, you see him start and then stop, because he's like, oh, that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, now he only goes, like, when he really has to go, because it's uncomfortable. Hmm. Do you, does he ever like revolt when you, when you have to like take off the diaper? Is he like immediately trying to be? <laughs> oh yeah, he definitely. As soon as I took him off, because I wanted to give him a break, uh, mm-hmm. plus I have to wash them. So, um, 
I took them off and he immediately went to two of the places. Mm -hmm. Like I still had the, you know, the pee pads up because I figured that would happen. And he does wriggle out of it eventually. Now that I know how tight it needs to be. Because the first time I put it on, I put it on way too loose. And he was out of that thing in like two minutes. <laughs> so. But we should dig in because I yeah. picked out a lot of words. And okay. some of them are absolutely silly. Some It'll be fun. You guys, this is, this is going to be such a fun highlight. So yeah, let's, let's, let's do I, some. I think it's fun. Yeah. So, no. did, no, did oh no, because no, because it went away it went when away. You left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I chose this because it it inspired me because I consider this a very brave because I am not one to pick a past like a true pastel color palette. I mm -hmm. mean. It's I mean, most vibe. of us, yeah, most of us, if we're, you know, like, if, if I want something pink, it's, it's muted, dusty pink. If I want something green, it's not mint green, it's sage, sage. Green. you know what I mean? Like, it's got, it's got some sort of uh, diluted white in it or black to, you know, can't, but this is uh, the inspiration of someone choosing a true pastel colored palette for their interior. And um, uh, I think it's very I, springy I, and I, inviting. Yes, uh, very springy, you know, definitely a little Easter eggy, but I wouldn't say either of these, uh, maybe it's the art, but read juvenile to me, like little girls mm -hmm. room. No. Um, I, I thought like, you know, the one on the left by grounding it with a kind of non bright pastel rug really helped all of the, you know, vivid pastels happening <laughs> uh, everywhere else. And I'm, I just, I thought it was inspiring. I still don't think I would choose such a strong pastel. Like right, a, right. And that yellow sofa is a statement. Yeah, for sure. And I do like yellow though. I just would worry about, well, I have a black cat, so it would be covered in fur. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Your and, centerpiece. Yeah. Just centerpiece ideas that I hadn't really seen before. <laughs> so, uh, or never really thought of the idea of draping from chandelier to table corner or table mm -hmm. end, whether using a ribbon or some sort of vine. Theory. Yeah, yeah, vine especially. I mean, it, it it's a beautiful idea. I think it'd be actually really nice outdoors, the vine idea, if you had some sort of outdoor chandelier or the right trees, but um something that I thought was unique. So I wanted to share this idea of I don't know what you would call this, like a a, a canopy for the table, slight canopy. Yeah, maybe like a Table bunting, maybe. Mm -hmm. Tammy saying uh, doesn't know she could do the brighter colors, um, but she loves them. Yeah, I. <laughs> I bet I, I would love your yellow kitchen, Tammy. I think like a small room, like it would be nice in because it would just like, especially if it was one that didn't have a lot of natural light, mm -hmm. it would like yellow on the walls it would be just sunshiny yeah but do i like this so chic charcuterie clips edition this just popped up in my feed today of course and Very then i was like cute. i like how they you know took the oreos apart to make it which Very you can also do for moon phases if you're thinking right you know, other occasions to use this but i was like have other people done this and the answer is yes yes of course everybody has done everything the minute you think you've seen an original idea everyone has done it seen it right but uh, i mean eclipses don't come around all that often so <laughs> i was like but people were like planning this like that one was what two days ago but um what's up the uh, sun made out of oranges 
I know. Uh, cute. So cute. And then this one, um, I like that they cut the star out of brie and then filled the brie with jam. That is now I really want a baked brie. <laughs> that does sound delicious. But a history thing, like, do you know that we might run out of brie cheese in our lifetime? Why would that be? I just read an article that the strain of bacteria that's used to make brie cheese is being altered, like, um, not by anybody's means, but just naturally altering. So brie might not be brie in the near future. Or the brie we eat isn't actually the brie of three hundred years ago oh well, that's definitely true yeah but it's going to be like unrecognizable supposedly hmm. these, these are the kinds of articles that show up in my feed and then i read them and i'm like oh, wow that's terrible poor brie cheese <laughs> because you know these this is the important things in life um <clears throat> first world problems right <sighs> So some more some more greenery on the table idea, but this it was more you know, just on the table. But using vines to create a lattice uh, design uh, in you know in between the plates, I hadn't seen this either. And this uh, is from this was a table set at, uh, for the Queen uh, of England. I was like, that's in a palace somewhere. Yeah, it is. It is. But, but I mean, the actual vine, the, you know, the crisscross vine idea is something mm -hmm. you could dress it Very down pretty. and do something completely casual, you know, for a spring table. It would be nice on a small table. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Susan. Hi. How's it going? Okay. So my next, um. Oh, no, you're next. Oh. Well, um, uh, I, I found a, a collection that I hadn't shared yet. It's getting harder and harder to find collections. <laughs> Jennifer oh, doesn't even relieve it. I don't either, Jennifer. I mean, I guess Brie is going to be the dinosaur of cheese pretty soon. But, yeah, I... These antique glass eyes. Now, when I looked at this picture, there was like an article where I talked about how they make them and they, they really, it's, it's blown glass. Like it's the full um, process where they, you know, add the little veins. So, you know, we're not talking doll eyes. We're talking antique glass eyes, you know, that were meant as a prosthetic, you know, if someone lost an eyeball. And they're quite uh, magnificent little um, artistic pieces of, of blown glass work. Probably, uh, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, um, probably. Did, did you see the little setup? Um, it was near the bathroom in the Museum of Glass here that you that I took you to. Oh. There was a little step by step showing how they made oh, the really? eyes. Yeah. Oh, dang it. I didn't, I don't think I saw it. I took a picture of it. I don't know. I don't know if I shared it or put it in the video, but um, it was very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, I don't think they get big. I think, well, you could make them big, but they have to be delicate. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is an artist um, that I think y'all should follow. Um, her name's Helena Haifman. Haifman? Um, I believe she's Dutch. Um, but this is six pictures from her Instagram feed. And she started this particular um, series of artworks, mm -hmm. I think, in 2016 when she broke a saucer that had like extreme like sentimental value to her and she's like I can't just throw it away she's like I know I can't use it anymore but surely there's a way to like use this breaking to make something cool and 
you know, we've all seen like mosaics using them or like yeah. jewelry. This is something completely. So she takes um, she takes the broken china and then matches up the colors with embroidery thread mm-hmm. and then attaches the pieces like that. So it's like it, imagine like it broke in slow motion and you just saw like the yes. colors stretch. Yeah, so that was that was her thought when she was doing these. Um, yeah. And it's, it's called it, Threadbare. Yeah, it definitely plays with the idea of dimension you yeah. know, with your eyes, it's almost like as if, you know, you're experiencing some sort some of, kind of glitch. Yes. 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 Yeah. But I, I just thought they were fantastic. Um, yeah. I don't think she's making new ones because they say it went through 2022. Um, but I just wanted to share some. So this was a teapot. Oh, I was like, look. Wow. Uh, and then she did like. I really like the one on the left with the birds. Yes. With all the different smaller pieces. Yeah, it, it's very creative. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. Um, but then she, this one, the one in the middle was a standalone piece called The Hunt. So it was, it's like, you know, a guy is hunting a rabbit, but mm-hmm. the way the plate broke, the rabbit like zoomed off to another dimension. Yeah. It's kind of what she wanted it to look like. Very cool. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I like the visual impact. I like the symbolism. Uh that's a very cool art installation Isn't idea. It? Yes. <laughs> now I'm tempted to try it. But you know. I have other projects from my broken china. Yeah. So I couldn't remember if we had a better title name for repurpose, like um, it was Rustic Reborn, yeah, was it or Rustic Dandy Reborn? DIY, one of those. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe Dandy DIY would. But either way, um, these are from someone named Barbara Rondello, and I know we've we've all seen kind of ideas like this, but I really wanted to share hers because I thought they were just so cute. They're just really well done. The brooch, They're adorable. Yeah, the little brooch on the side looking like a little um, hat, uh, fascinator hat. And, the you know, they each one had the little purses. And so uh, it's one of those where I'm I'm going to end up picking up some old shaker or perfume bottle waiting for the broken, <laughs> broken I've figurine. Some, I've got some broken I'll heads. Put them together. <laughs> they are awesome. in your box. Yeah, I I thought so too, Tammy. I thought they were just they were just adorable. They're very charming. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? I'm so ready for this. So, what led to this was um for the past year or so, occasional like Victorian slang will be turned into a meme and then people are like, "Oh, we need to adopt this." And I finally got one um, which I will share. Hey, Danny Grace. Um, but I found the book that all of these came from. So I was like, all right, y'all, let's do an Angela's pick of Victorian slang. <laughs> Words either. So what I did is like I picked words we still use today and I found it interesting that they originated in this way um, or just ones I found hilarious or ones that are just a little quirky mm-hmm. because, you know, that's that's how I roll. So mm-hmm. but this was published in 1909 about words that came into fashion from the 1870s to the 1890s. And, um, and if you think about it today, that was only what, 30, 40 years ago. So it'd be like someone today doing 80s slang, like a book of 80s. Mm-hmm. Slang. Like, oh, I can't even, righteous or, you know. Right. Um, uh, tubular. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's gag. more 90s. Yeah. Gag, 
gag me or uh, what else right. did people say? I don't remember. <laughs> I'd have to go watch some like 80s shows or TV Or like what's, what's the... the like in the '70s, gnarly, yeah, gnarly, groovy, or you know. there was a lot of surfer slang that popped up then, and like skateboarding yeah. slang. So, yeah. gag me with a spoon, yeah. Yes, that's right, Laura. So, I wanted to read um, the beginning of uh, Jay Reddingware's intro. Um, here is a numerically weak collection of instances of passing English. It may be hoped that there are errors on every page, and also that no entry is quite too dull. Thousands of words and phrases in existence in 1870 have drifted away, or changed their forms, or been absorbed, while as many have been added or are being added. Passing English ripples from countless sources, forming a river of new language, which has its tide and its ebb, while its current brings down new ideas and carries away those that have dribbled out of fashion. Not only is passing English general, it is local. Often very seasonably local. <laughs> Which, the way, and I also picked some words that are very reminiscent of words that like Gen Z are doing now or were mm -hmm. recently doing. Mm -hmm. So this mixing of language has always happened. And as you will see, from our slide. So we all still use this phrase. Yes. An axe to grind. Mm -hmm. did, did, I didn't even know that it was about literal people in the backwoods. They would go to like grind their axe. Really, they were slipping away to have a drink. Really? Mm -hmm. I did so, not. A, a, a personal end to serve, originally a favor to ask, for men in backwoods pretending to want to grind their axes when in reality they required a drink. An American etymologist says the origin of this phrase has been attributed to Benjamin Franklin. Hmm. But then they're, um, usually the latter half of each entry is actual excerpts from letters or newspapers showing the use of the phrase at the time mm -hmm. so i won't i won't read those unless it's particularly funny okay um doo -doo -doo. bags of mystery bags <laughs> oh mystery it's a satirical oh for sausage <laughs> no one but the maker knows what's in them <laughs> Which makes me think of hot dogs. Makes you know? me think of mystery meat, you know, like the, the cafeteria term of like mystery it's meat. Always, or... It's always been that way. Yeah. Like, I didn't I didn't say this, but there was also Saturday pie, and that was people took whatever meat was left from the week and just threw it all on a pie. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there was a whole lot of terms about food, drink, drunks, and Surprisingly, hairstyles. I didn't do very many hairstyles, but yeah, bags oh, of mystery. Sarah and I were on the same same wavelength. Hey, so, Mary, this goes back to 1850. Wow! And then this, I found barbecue comes from doing like cooking a whole animal. Okay. Now we think of barbecue as like, you know, fired and then sauced or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in the US, when it first started, it, it meant to denote a noisy political meeting. A barbecue? Yeah. This barbecue hold in used to be a very popular form of political excitement in the olden time. <laughs> oh, kind of like a comedy roast? I know, but they would they would roast a whole animal and then they would like feed people, like draw in people by roasting a whole animal and then, you know, proselytize whatever political thing they were trying to promote. Mm -hmm. So the barbecue was announced as a monster democratic rally. Huh. A grand old political carnival and ox roast. Interesting. Yeah. So but it comes from, which I do, it comes from beard to tail, 
barbecue, which I did oh. not even know that it came from French words. Okay. Beard to tail. Uh-huh. Barb to Q. Yeah. I like I like knowing that. That's the kind of thing that I want to remember, but my brain usually doesn't remember you those won't. those awesome tidbits that I that I you want to bring up in a conversation because it, it's fun, you know. And There's gonna be lots of those in here. <laughs> yes. You wait. Being a barmy. Like, I've called people Barmy before, but that's because I read a whole lot of British literature. But it comes from St. Bartholomew, the saint of mad people. Which I did not know. The patron saint of mad people. Yeah. Hmm. Barmy? Bar yeah, Barmy. Which is just where they took Bartholomew and then they called him Bartholomew and then just even shorter to Barmy. So in some areas, if they wanted to say somebody was uh, mad, they'd say, he's barmy. He's barmy, yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. The family has always been a bit barmy in the crumpet. Why Crump crumpet should stand for head is so far beyond discovery. <laughs> this guy also has a it's lot of... It's not what life. I would think. If I was talking about my crumpet, I'd be thinking of something <laughs> totally different. Barbie and the Crumpet. Uh, okay. Did you know that Skittles is an actual word? <laughs> I just thought Skittles was a nonsense word they used for candy. I wonder if they, I mean, I wonder if they know the history of the word. They must. So Skittles was a kind, when I looked it up, it was a kind of game. So when you're just going out for, you know, beer and Skittles, you're going to drink and play a game. And play a game. Okay. So Skittles goes way back. I wonder if Skittles was usually a specific game or if it just meant any game. It was a specific game. I think there was like pins involved. I think it was similar to bowling. Okay. Because there was rolling a ball and hitting pins. Okay. And then they would skittle around. Ah, wouldn't that be cute if if we if they didn't change uh, the name to bowling and you would go to a skittle alley? <laughs> We're going skittling. We're, yeah, I think that'd be adorable. So I'm I'm pretty sure I'm a blousabella, a vulgar, self-assertive woman, generally stout. Ah. <laughs> uh. I feel, I feel like from blouser from blouse honestly i feel like we need when i come busy we need to make uh honorary blouse bella sashes oh wait there's even better ones coming for to wear, to wear. <laughs> what are the words that led me here i'm like just you wait y'all just you wait okay. so we got blouse bella two o'clock in the morning you know, when the sky turns from black to, you've been, you've been up way too long if it's blue o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't see a hole in a 40 foot ladder. Can't that means see. you're drunk because there's 40 holes to see in that ladder and you can't see a single one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Correctivancterous. Correctivancterous. <laughs> Desperately <laughs> wanting in self possession. An intensification of cantankerous. Okay, I was wondering. Correctivancterous. <laughs> I just love correctivancterous. And so here is. The word in a sentence. I've seen folks upon this river, quiet looking chaps too, as you ever see, who were so teetotally correct of anctorous that they'd shoot the doctor who'd tell them they couldn't live when ailing and make a lie of it, just out of spite when told they must get well. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then there's a carry witchet. Ooh. A puzzling question. It's quite a carry widget. 
I like that. That mm -hmm. that is one I want to adopt. Suggestive of bewilderment. They think it could have come from a name of a difficult woman who asked a lot of questions. Carrie Widget. Okay. Just meant Carrie was smarter than they could handle. Carrie Widget. A cat lap. Tea and coffee. I mean, how dare you? Cat lap in a club. Okay, yeah, that sounds, again, like it should mean something completely different. <laughs> it's just, it does, it's what, it's like, because kittens would drink it, you know? You're not a real man. You're drinking coffee and tea at the club instead of liquor. Okay. Just having some cat lap. I guarantee if I tell Scott... You want some cat lap? You want some cat lap? <laughs> He'd say, indeed, I do. <laughs> and wag. Now, I have heard this one. It's just like for like, you know, a little talk. Let's have mm -hmm. a chin wag. Because you're wagging your chin. Yes. Yeah. But I didn't realize it went all the way back to 1898. Circumbendibus is evasion. just evasion. Mm -hmm. Based upon circumlocation. So he allowed the accusation by a circumbendibus. Wait a minute. Is... Ev evasion based upon circumlocution. Yeah. So, so circumlocution has to do with speech. Circum has to do with um, like going around. Yeah, but it's like like talking, like talking in a circle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure because like like elocution is you know like with the voice. So yeah. I'm trying. I was like thinking, so it has to be more of like talking in a circle. Yeah, and so sim similar is circumbendibus. What would would you be circumbendibusive if you're evasive? Um, I think that would be an awesome word. Circumbend abusive. Yeah. Circumbend abusive. I, all asked you, I asked you a carry widget. <laughs> but that's like all those, you know, kids who want to like keep talking to get themselves out of something. Yeah. Yeah. Quack box. It's the male version of a chatterbox. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. It says this word really comes to town. I Because the men don't want to admit their clack boxes. Ah. Uh. Oop. So we've all heard stage five clinger, right? Yeah. But it goes back to somebody who holds on too tight in a waltz. That is a great one. I like that. Yes. Do it, Devin. <laughs> now, this is us. We're coffee sisters. Hey, Christy. Malignant gossipers from the women drinking in coffee and scandal at the same eager moment. Much after the word tea talker in England. What is she? A mere coffee sister? Okay. How dare we talk and drink coffee in public? <laughs> hey, Christy. Uh, so there was, there's one. We could be coffee sisters. I, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's already a given. But, but wait. Wait till we get to the M's. Okay. Come and have a pickle. <laughs> you, even the description is suggestive. <laughs> An invitation to a quick unceremonious meal. That's just a snack. 
But given what people use the term snack for now today, it's mm-hmm. not helpful. <laughs> no. Come and have a pickle. Exactly. Now, now, yeah. if meant, so there, there are some like erotic phrases and he denotes that. So this was not intended I to get be it. I know. I'm just saying it just sounds the way they oh, no. worded it. Come and have a pickle. <laughs> Come and have a pickle. Come and sensible. We need more of it. Mm-hmm. We need more people to be common sensible. Damn foolishness. <laughs> Not just foolish, damn foolish. Yes. I'm full of damn foolery. <laughs> Doing the bear. That's when you hug whom you're courting. You're oh doing my bear. gosh, that's adorable. That's like because a bear hug. It's like the 19th century of saying, like, oh, first base or something, like doing the bear. Or, <laughs> that's cute. Or or 15 would be like 50s would be like necking, you know? Uh-huh. You're, you're doing the bear. Foolishness and tens of eyes, yes. It, see, David only wants real pickles. <clears throat> So, I was surprised. So, because, you know, drag shows are a very common thing, but I did not realize that it came from the theater. Oh, okay. When the petticoat or skirt used by actors who were portraying women would drag the dresses because it didn't really fit them. Okay. Okay. As distinct from the non-dragginess of trousers, because trousers are fit and they go above the thing. Also given to feminine clothing by eccentric youth when dressing up in skirts. So drag has been around, y'all, since at least 1887. Drink tight. Drink-y tight? Drink-a-tight, as opposed to appetite. Just drink it tight. Oh, a drink it. Okay, a drink it. How's your drink it tight? Are you thirsty? Uh, there was also a bite it tight, which was for when you just wanted a nibble. Bite hmm. it tight. Drink it tight and bite it tight. Eat vinegar with a fork. Oh my goodness. So this, so this, that was like telling somebody off. Yeah. So like if you were, um, like if somebody was really like sharp, but like extra, like they were pointed, they eat vinegar with a fork. Okay. Yeah. Jennifer's working up a drink of tight. Ecker for exercise and this is what i was getting to you know how like the past few years there's been a lot of shortening of words like probs or oh gorge for gorgeous mm-hmm. or deets, thing. like deets, deets. For, de- for detail yeah. yeah ecker for exercise yeah i don't want to do an ecker and then there's footer and constitutor <laughs> and then but I, I included this one because at the bottom, you've got slacker. For someone who slacks idly about. And I I thought that was like a purely 1990s. Right. Story. But no, that's 1899. 1899. 14th of August. Okay. I'll try to move faster. <laughs> We're really in the ease. <laughs> so... <laughs> I found this appropriate because we now have electric cards and they electrate. As okay. opposed because you can't call them, you know, like locomotions. They can't use their say they're not sailing or steaming, they're electrating. Oh, okay. But I think we need to bring that back for all the Tesla users. And yeah. Farthing faced chit. <laughs> wow. 
small, mean face, as insignificant as a farthing. Chit also means small and contemptible. Now, you guys need to put that in your pocket for when you really need to, like, take someone down a notch. Just call them a farthing-faced chit. They probably are thinking that you'd be saying something else. Yeah. And that you were just slurring your language. <laughs> they wouldn't even know you were actually trying to give them a Victorian. <laughs> I know, but that's part of the fun. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's like, you don't even know how badly you're getting told off right now. The flapper goes back to 1892. Oh. A very immoral young girl in her early teens. Flaxation. Apparently, Americans had an issue with swearing. So we came up with a lot of things that weren't actually swear words in order to not curse. Oh. So flaxation was a term we used for damnation. Okay. Like tarnation, mm -hmm. only flaxation. Right. Fly Lou. Oh, we should play this game this summer. Players stand around a table, each with a lump of sugar or a bit of honey. The owner of the sweets, upon which a fly first lands, wins. <laughs> You're betting on who gets a fly first. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Why not? Oh, these poor old Victorian women who found that entertaining. <laughs> hey, you know. Forest of Fools. That's where we live. Forest of Fools. That that sounds like it would be a Shakespearean uh, very. word. You know, like it a... actually goes back to 1609. So, you know. Mm hmm So a function, we're all going to have a function instead of a get together, which it's funny because, you know, I call things functions all the time. I didn't realize how old it was. <laughs> was like, Let's have a function. Bring him back flaxation. Giggle mug. Somebody who is always smiling. That's cute. I like the giggle. So this is one of the ones that's been going around in memes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> get the sads. I'm going to get the sads. Oh, to have the vapors. Like to have the vapors. You're going to get the sads. <laughs> okay. Go to Hanover. <laughs> so that was that was a polite way to tell people to go to hell. Because according to the Jacobites, Hanover equaled hell. Okay. <laughs> but that that's a deep historical dive I'm not going to go into. These two go together. <laughs> a Godfer is a troublesome child. God forbids mean is kids. So I'm not having any God forbids. Right. Devin has a giggle mug. <laughs> Gospel um, of the Tub. Now, if you are a follower of any, like, health YouTubers, they talk about ice baths. They preach the Gospel of the Tub. Okay. This one is my favorite. Got the morbs. Got the morbs. Yeah, when you you know you're you're a little bit down just for a little while, you got the morbs. <laughs> All right. It kind of seems like trivializing trivializing someone's bout of depression, but it is. But you know that's what we do to get yeah. through. <laughs> we got yeah. the morbs. We also have got the woefuls. Okay. So they're different. You got you could you could have the morbs or the woefuls. You could have morbs and woefuls at the same time, I'm pretty sure. 
Sounds <laughs> like epilepsy and woozles. <laughs> her lumps. Now a hug center. I and it's funny because it, they call it headquarters of public lovemaking. But and but I, they, they just mean a park. They just mean like a hug. Yeah, like where where people go to have assignations. Yeah. So, in Central Central Park was a hub center. The amount of love made visible in Central Park is simply appalling. 1882. <laughs> And I'm sure they actually meant just literal hugs. We're not talking about inflagrante delicto. We're talking <laughs> just PDA. Right. Mm -hmm. Kill with kindness. I This phrase goes way back. Yeah. A leg maniac. <laughs> Is an eccentric rapid dancer. <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it just makes me think of the Ministry of Silly Walks. I don't know Monty that. Py Monty Python's Ministry of Silly Walks. Uh, no, I don't think I saw that. Oh, it's it's funny, but <laughs> I have never been a leg maniac. I I am a leg maniac. <laughs> so let her rip. Like, I have heard this phrase for so long, and I did not realize that it goes back to steamboats on the Mississippi. So often the boiler would burst or rip um, if it got too hot. Elaine is a leg maniac. Yeah, I was just going to put a comment in. But yeah, it's funny. And, um, but like people would tell them to, you know, lower the steam pressure. And they're like, no, we're going forward. Let her rip. Okay. And now you know. It has, like, I just thought it was about, like, fabric ripping or something. Oh, not, yeah. I've not I mean, steam explosions. Yeah. But it's interesting that at least it like, it's kept its main. It's kept the meaning. Of, so, yeah. of, of, of movement in, a, in some sort of, not vehicle, but like a moving. Yeah. Well, I actually thought it came from, like, ripcord, you know? Oh. Um. Um, Okay. Like let her rip, you know. You jump out of the plane, let her rip. Okay. But it's it's from. Yeah, I always heard it. I always heard it used like you know, give it the juice, let her rip. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Start the engine. You know. Yeah. Because they don't care if it blows up. They they got places to be. This was just <laughs> random. Men of Alabama were called lizards. <laughs> Interesting. I I wonder what parts of of the states that people used that term. I don't know because the author of this book was British, so mm -hmm. um, you know that he's he's getting it secondhand. He's not yeah. you know going around the states listening to people talk. But yeah, I I just would love to know the history behind it. Right. It is Very oddly cool. specific. Look slippery. <laughs> Hurry up. Be quick. Look slippery. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll have to ask Miss Pam. I bet she knows some lizards. Interesting. Hey, Karina. And now now people usually say look alive. Like, like you know, look alive. or Be, be alert. Yeah. Be alert. Be quick. Yeah. See, it looks slippery. Like, for us today, like, it's like somebody's trying to be cunning to me. Right. Is what I would think if I saw that. Yes. Agree. But look slippery. Malwarmy. So somebody who is like always looking for the bad. Oh. It's Malwarmy. Okay. Came from a stage character. I'm pretty sure this guy was active in the theater because there was also a lot of theater focused words. Mixologist. Ah. Uh, goes way back to the American oh, yeah. Saloon. Oh, wait. Um, so I I always thought mixologist was like a 1920s um or like bar culture creation. Yeah. 
Right. I did not think it went back that mm -hmm. far. Right. We all, we all thought that, you know, people were being, uh, you know, creative in the yeah, 90s. They were being 90s. Cute, yeah. yeah, cute, but. No, it, yeah. it goes way back to the American Saloon. That's the dawn of heavy drinking. <laughs> A muff. <laughs> A stupid, dilatory, inactive, and generally amiable young man. He's useless, but he's nice to hang around. He's just a muff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this one is random. Acknowledge the corn. So I don't I don't remember why I saved it, <laughs> but it was I don't even understand the sentence, sir. I believe you are now, after my wife. So it came. Point. So um, a guy said that he, I acknowledge the corn. Like I took the pipe, but I, I didn't do anything with your wife. So it's like, yes, I did this thing, but not the bigger thing. I acknowledge okay. the corn. All right. Yes, a muff is a himbo for sure. This is us. Are you ready? Okay. Oh no. Wallopers. I don't want to wear that on a sash. <laughs> I I don't want it. <laughs> Scandal loving women, <clears throat> chiefly spinsters, who meet over a cup of tea. You don't want to be a muff and a ball. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll be one. But remember how I said I want to put it on a sash? I, I just, I don't want to. We'll do Coffee Sisters and then a real small print and muffin wallabers. <laughs> okay, that'll do. That'll do. <laughs> My friend Dawn sent me this. And she's like, she's like, hey, we're muffin wallabers. I was like, yep, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> So, um, have you, we've all like talked about like needling someone, but I didn't realize that it came from Taylor's. Okay. That makes sense. I guess. Yeah. So. Cause they would get irritated because they kept running their needle into their finger. Mm -hmm. Not as funny as muffin walloper, but no. An old Wigsby. <clears throat> A crotchety, narrow-minded elderly man who snappishly can see no good in any modern thing. We have we have a lot of old wigs piece about these days. Mm -hmm. Well, pretty much, you know, the older you get, the less you like the mo the modern things. <laughs> it, yeah, it's like it's the eighteen nineties version of OK Boomer. Right. Yeah. yeah. So again, nothing new under the sun. <laughs> And so ornery, we spell it slightly different here, but I had no idea that it was a construction of the word ordinary. Oh, yeah. But okay. for contemptible. So you're just ornery. Mm -hmm. Them ornery sneaks had sought the clocks a half an hour ahead. Okay. Out of sorts, we use out of sorts. What I did not know is that it comes from the typesetting when the compartments were missorted. And oh. now, at, by the time of the printing of this book, it was already out of because other like types, the way that the type was set by that point in time was completely different. That's fascinating. <clears throat> yeah. So out of sorts comes from the type printing trade. Which, it, you know, I never thought about it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just out of sorts. But mm -hmm. what, what sort? <laughs> well, well, like when th you're, you're either sorted or you're unsorted. So I figure when right. you're out, when you're out of sorts, you're just, you know, not just 
you're not put together. Modulated. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I never went down, you know, yeah. the thought trail to be like, oh, but what was sorted? I don't know. Yeah. Um, peck sniffian. If somebody is hypercritical. Okay. Or hypocritical, they're peck sniffian. Hmm. Don't be a hypocrite. That's peck sniffian. More pickles. <clears throat> the term of contempt, pickled dog. It's like they're just a pickled dog. And then if you just want to say, it's just an exclamation, you just say pickles. <laughs> oh, like, um, that's pickles. Like, like, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. Not, that's nonsense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's pickles. Okay. I might pick that one up because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that and come have a pickle. <laughs> but then somebody yes. might say pickles to your offer of a pickle. Yes. And then they'd be a pickled dog. Yes. <laughs> Pill pusher goes back way back now this is where we it's like uh, Portuguese pumping not to be learned ask sailors the meaning of this phrase and they may laugh a good deal but they give no etymology it is probably nasty <laughs> okay I'll leave that up to your imagination And another shorting, procesh, short for procession. Okay. And that's funny because we still use things like sesh for a session of something. Yeah. Like, Just have yeah. a quick sesh. Yeah. Procesh. Pumblechook. What? No. Pumblechook. Now, I want to know, do y'all think this is like talking about the body part or a human Donkey. What do you all think? I don't know. I'm going with like a human donkey. Kitty thinks it's a body part. Okay. Kiss my pumble chuck. So you think you think that they mean that they're talking about like um uh, a character in Midsummer Night's Dream or something. Oh, oh, maybe. Every everybody's saying a body part. Oh, Pumblechook. I did not. I did not dig into the etymology of any of these because I didn't have time. <laughs> but if there's one you want me to do a deep dive on, be like, why? I can do that. Doesn't yeah. matter. But. I'm going to tell people to kiss my pumblechook from now on. It's pretty cute. Red herring. We talk, oh, we talk about a red herring argument, but I did not know that it came from dragging a literal red herring at the end of a string to confuse hounds <gasps> during a fox hunt. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. There you go. I mean, I just knew it was a red herring argument, but I was like, but but why is it a red herring? <laughs> why not a pickled herring? <laughs> so, yeah. So it was a way of like testing which hounds were going to be really good or which ones would be too easily thrown by any scent. Right. Sam Hill. Like, I've heard this before. Yes. But it just means some hell. Ah. Uh, port, and I'm guessing Sam Hill was a notoriously wild-tongued man. Sauce box. <laughs> shut your shop. Shut, shut, shut. I can't say it. <laughs> 
shut your sauce box. <laughs> Let me know if you use this. <laughs> it would be great. But it sounds like, I mean, when you think of like, oh, they're on the sauce, it sounds more of like a sauce box would be like if if they're a heavy drinker. They were a drinker. Yeah, they're on the sauce. <laughs> sauce box does sound like something you shouldn't say. Yes. They just they words just fall out of his spodlikins. Spodlikins means spodlikins. obscure. Yeah. I mean, so like so the it's, just, is, it's a biblical term sounds like here. Uh -huh. It comes from like his things like that's spodlikins. I just, I just liked it. Spod Lincolns. Interesting. It says, it says the meaning is obscure. Nobody knows, but it's an exclamation. Just like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Spod uh, Yeah. Okay. Shamateurs. People who are not even amateurs. Shamateurs. Okay. I like this one. Show a leg day. Show a leg day? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Show a leg day. It was when it was muddy and the women's had to carry their skirts high and they exposed their ankles. So, show a leg day. It's so if it's been like a rainy, muddy day in the streets, and all the men are like, it's, it's a show a leg day. day. Show a leg day. <laughs> they were excited. <laughs> Sieve memory, which I have. Yeah. I always say my brain has holes in it, which is basically a sieve memory. Yeah. Afternoonified. Um, they are not afternoonified enough for me. So, um, where was it? smart, like it's gotta be, oh. it's not nice enough to wear in the afternoon. Basically it needs to be afternoonified. Okay. This was one of the ones that I mislabeled. So we have an A in the, in the S's stick and bangers. Oh, that's cute. It's a billiard cue and balls, but it may also have an erotic meaning. <laughs> Thingamabobs. Which I I just thought it was just like a thing, a thingamabob, but originally it meant like trousers or unmentionables. Huh. Thingamabobs. They're your undies. They're your, they're your pantaloons. <laughs> your thingamabobs. <laughs> Tintamar, noise, hubbub. You okay? No, Malcolm's getting up behind me. Yeah, you got to look out. <laughs> He's got his diaper on. We're okay. safe. <laughs> Speaking of Spodlykins, that's what I should refer to it as. It's Malcolm Spodlykins. Please pay no attention. <laughs> I really like this one. Toast your blooming eyebrows when you're telling wow. something you do. Yeah, just toast your blooming eyebrows. Yeah. We're we're nearing the end, y'all. Thanks for sticking with me. Toddy all colors, a young person who has contrived to get most of the colors of the rainbow into her costume. Oh, so she's peacocking because she wants mm -hmm. she wants her outfit to have all the colors. She's toddy all colors. I love that. I love it. I'm a toddy all color. <laughs> all right. Umble come stumble. Umble <laughs> come stumble. Thoroughly understood is what it means. That is not what I would have guessed. So you say something and they're like, humble come stumble. Like, got it. Capiche. Yeah. But 
and then Vogue. Vogue! And it says it was only used in early 1897 to mean fashion. And now we know. It's the Vogue is still Vogue. Vogue is. That's a great word. Okay. And then this, these were a couple W's in a row that I liked. Warm as they make them, which means immoral. Ooh. A warm bit is a vigorous woman. And a warm corner is a nook where birds are found in plenty. And he does not mean foul. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> if a woman if a woman is warm, <laughs> be careful. Yeah. And then as far as the Ys, I found the YMCA. Which you found the YMCA? Is, oh, wow. And it meant a goody goody. Pure in excelsis. Meaning the Young Men's Christian Association was the end all be all of goody two shoes at that point in time. Uh, okay. Young men. <laughs> okay. And the final one is Zooks. Gadzooks! Gadzooks! But they they just said Zooks at that point in time. Of course, it meant the nails used to nail Jesus to the cross, but it was just one of those random exclamations like Spodlikins. But you had Zooks because of... Spodlikins were caused by Zooks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... That was my tour. I loved it. And remind me, what is it again? A, a muffin walloper? Is that what it muffin is? Muffin walloper and a coffee sister. Okay. And I'm a blouser Bella. Okay. <laughs> right, Devin? But I'm I'm going to strive to be a toddy all collar blouser Bella. <laughs> muffin walloping coffee sister. Oh, my gosh. Full of carry witchers. And Tintamar. See, I forgot half of them already. <laughs> they no, I, have spent, I have spent the last week reading through this. And there is so much more. I will absolutely drop the link um, of it. It's, it's an archive. Um, open. Um, it's in the public domain is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So... If y'all want to take a gander through the Victorian slang, feel free to do so. Um, there is, you know, it's of the time there is some questionable racism, but not questionable. There's some outright racism in there. So just don't use those. <laughs> That's yeah, all. don't use those. <laughs> just don't use those. No. Um, but let me know if you had a favorite word and if you do visit the Passing English from 1909, let me know what your favorite is. Yeah, uh, I, we, there's definitely a few that we've got to bring back. Oh, yeah. I just need, I just need to go back, rewatch this and remind myself of which ones they are. <laughs> yeah, I can I can I can send them to you because there were there were some that. Tell us, tell us. <laughs> I want to know. And I'm I'm thinking about taking all the ones that I I really liked and sharing them one by one over the next little bit on Instagram. So yeah, that'd be fun. So you guys we should totally do that. I think that that's that's a great idea. I'll work on it. Which one should I leave out is the question. Right. Come have a pickle. <laughs> I need yeah. to go have a pickle. I have not had dinner. <clears throat> but oh, um, thanks for sticking with us, most of y'all. I'm sorry yeah. this took so long. But I could have been much longer. Like, I edited it down. Yeah. No, that was fun. But don't get the morbs. No. Or the woefuls. 
or the woefuls. Until I, I like using that word more. It, it it makes me think of, you know, like Maggie Smith and Downton Abbey saying, "Oh, I have the woefuls" or something. Like yeah. there's, I like it better than than morbs. <laughs> See, I think it's, see, my, my gothy little heart is like, mm, I got the boards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Catherine. Catherine, hey, are you going to be a muffin walloper with us? <laughs> she says, um, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Straight from my sauce box to your ears. <laughs> Okay. Well, everyone, I hope you have a fantastic week. Again, don't catch the morbs or the woefuls. No. Um, we will see you next week. Yes. On Heather Elizabeth's channel. Yes. And ha just have a great night. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you. Okay.